This morning, I dreamt that I had to wake up early and make this video. I believe the topic I chose was about vegetables, so I included a segment about peas, and there's something about lots of people coming over to our house, and they're all eating vegetables for breakfast. So last night, my family and I were talking about Original Sin. We were asking why exactly Eve decided to take the forbidden fruit. And some of the reasons we came up with were, well, maybe she was tempted up after a long time, and after many successive um, tries, she finally gave in to Satan. I mean, that's not in the Bible, but it is in Paralandra. Not the giving in, though. Another thing I was thinking about was what Tuesday said in his very first video. I think he said something about Jesus not being perfect, or people not being perfect. And it's this idea that while Adam and Eve were sinless, Perhaps they were not perfect, that perfection is something that you have to reach through suffering and through the testing of your faith. So maybe that has something to do with it. And I guess a final reason would have to do with free will, with the fact that Adam and Eve were in a world where nothing had gone wrong, where there was no sin because no one deviated from God's will. But because God had stated a will, or because God had stated a commandment for them to obey, there was always the potential for them to disobey it. I don't know if innocence makes someone more susceptible to being tempted, or if it's even fair to understand what happened back in the Garden of Eden from our perspective on here on Earth when there already is sin. So I'm not sure that's something I can understand. Another question I have which kind of relates to this is a meta question. A lot of people can argue about little theological things, which I personally don't care to argue about. I guess I wonder, should I be focused on finding out the answers? Or is it all right if I kind of push it to the side? I think back to a quote I read from John Piper, I believe, and he said something about what makes a person a theologian is if when they see a contradiction or some kind of disunity between their understanding and what the Bible seems to be saying, instead of just pushing it underneath the rug, it's an interesting idea, they decide to search it out and to try to understand what the Bible is saying so they bring their lives under the headship of God. And a little side note on that, I've actually experienced this for myself when I was reading Ephesians like maybe a year ago or several months ago. I came across the phrase that talked about the plan for the fullness of time to unite all things to Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. And when I read it that first time, I was just like, what? What's this whole deal with uniting? But now, that thought is so important to me, and it's one of the ways that I understand the future purpose, which is kind of what I talked about in my purpose video, about God bringing things into unity with himself. So, I can definitely agree that it's important to understand what the Bible is saying. But what I'm apt to do about questions that I just, like, don't know the answer to, like this question about where did sin come from, or, well, there's a lot of really big puzzling questions about Christianity. My initial attitude towards it is it's good to ask the questions and to think about it because even if you don't get that question answered, you'll also talk about a lot of other things and increase in your understanding of how and who God is. But I wouldn't actually stress out about getting the answers or about expecting answers. I think that's okay. I'm not exactly sure though. Sometimes I think it might be a good idea to be extreme in the way you pursue questions or the way that you ask questions and pursue their answers. That would also involve letting a lot of other things fall to the wayside and getting consumed by every single question you encounter. So since I'm talking about sin, there's another question that I've been wondering about for quite a while, and that is about the evil characters in books. Like in Lord of the Rings, there's the character Gollum, who kind of works as a foil to the other good characters. Sometimes I have a hard time understanding why God would have to create characters who end badly, who have a role to play in the larger story, but their individual stories don't end well. They fall into a pit of fire, quite literally. While I definitely am under coming to understand better judgment and how important it is that God judges those who sin, both for the integrity of his own nature and so that evil can be at last conquer. I still wonder about the individual people. That's something I'm not completely sure about. Anyway guys, that's all I have today. 
Have a great Wednesday.